How y'all doing? You know, uh, what I'm going to talk about is, is like creativity and crisis and how you need to communicate in sort of simple terms, if you will, and not say too much. Because actually, if you think about communications, it's really the less, the more you say, the less you heard. And so I was thinking of a way to how to illustrate that, you know, because I'm always asked, you know, gee, what do you think of the oil spill? Well, you know what it is, what is that? And I was thinking of a simple way to convey what I thought about the oil spill, but not waste a lot of your time, but yet to demonstrate to you exactly what I think. That's what I think of the oil spill. <laughs> now, if you notice, it didn't take me very long. I didn't have to waste a lot of words, did I? But in that, you understand what I think. In, in, in when we talk about the great engineering failure of 2005, and by the way, we don't use the N-word. It's not the end disaster. There's nothing that is natural about what happened here. And we've got to be very, very careful very, very careful that we point that out to people. Because you hear this out of Washington and you hear this out of New York, well, it's the biggest natural disaster and it lived below sea level and it was just something. No, 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 no. Don't use that word. It's a bad word. It's a bad, bad word because it conveys the wrong thing. Because what you're telling us is that you weren't irresponsible, that we are irresponsible, and that's exactly backwards. And this, and this kind of attitude has to be fought and has to be fought vigorously every time that it rears its ugly head. It's just like they want to say, well, we've cleaned everything up. Time to go. Move on to the next thing. Whoa, horse, not so fast. Not so fast. And people... In, and you have something that is just enormous, and it's hard to explain. If you try to explain everything, you explain nothing. If you think about it, in, in, in communications is the only endeavor on earth where you multiply by subtracting. Sounds odd, because anything else, the, the, the kind of, here, the less you say, the more you hurt is demonstrated by my attitude toward the oil spill. And, you know, uh, you hear these people and they go, you know, it's just these sound bites out there, you know, and it's just this everything is being reduced to just these little simple slogans. And then, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, shut up. Shut up. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of simplistic creativity profound. I have two daughters, younger. I, when they were born, because of nature, who I and my wife, and we got books on how to raise kids. We got books from doctors, and we got books from clerics. We got books from psychologists and everything. How many books do you think they are as to how to raise a child? Hundreds, hundreds of thousands. Suppose you said, you know what? I'm not paying any attention to any of that junk. I'm going to raise these children on the basis of just a sound bite. How stupid can you be? I mean, nobody like, is going to like raise children on a sound bite. You couldn't do that. I mean, it's too many complicated things, and, and they're things that they're faced with in life, and they've got to make decisions about this and that, and that's just totally irresponsible. Okay, try this one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Or do unto others as you haven't do that. Suppose you just went through life, and you said, that is the way that I'm going to lead my life. Whoa. <laughs> you do pretty good, wouldn't you? In fact, there are people that say that there hasn't been another thought in human relations since Hillel uttered it 5,000 years ago when Jesus sort of perfected it 2,000 years ago. Simple soundbite. Takes no time at all. Don't, don't do that to your sister. You wouldn't want her to do that to you. Don't treat people like that. You wouldn't want them to treat you like this. That's all it is. A soundbite. And so we have to explain to people, because they don't know. And they say, well, why did you move back to New Orleans? 
Oh, what's the deal down there? It's, it, it, it's, a, it's a vulnerable city. It's, it's, it, it's human in the summertime. It's steamy. It's got problems. <laughs> I, you know, in, 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 you know what, what I try to explain to people is this. Is see, everywhere else in the country, when people talk to us, say, you know, we have a quality of life here. We have so many bike paths, and we have a museum, and we got this much green space, and we have a, 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 a shopping mall, and we have, a, a, you know, all that. Nobody in New Orleans ever, ever speaks of the quality of life. We don't. We care about our way of life. You care about your quality of life. We want to preserve a way of life. We don't want to be like you. You have to understand that. The first thing you need to understand about us, we don't want you. We don't want your beltways and your loops and your Applebee's and your strip malls. We don't want to go somewhere and see everybody else that looks like us. We like seeing people that are different. And so forget it. And we, and we don't. And when this happened, when, when, when the, the great, right, in, right after the engineering disaster of 2005, and people said, well, we'll do this, and man, we could take advantage, and we, we could be Houston. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. Thank you, Houston. You have a very humanitarian, a great city. We don't want to be you. We don't, and if we lose who we are on some God awful somebody telling us it's, you know, if we knock everything down and build strip malls and Applebee's and every other godforsaken thing that they got out there, <laughs> what are we? And, and we don't, and people say, well, you know, e efficiency, efficiency, oh, efficiency, what's that? It's not efficiency that we strive for. It's a way of life. Yeah, it takes a little longer. You, you know, you go to these places and a sandwich is ready to go. You know, if you go, if you're going to get a good po' boy, you got to, you got to, it's got to be real roast beef. It's got to be a certain way. It takes a little time. It takes a little time. We're willing to do that. If we don't, we don't expect you to live like we do, but we do expect you to respect the way that we live. We choose to do it. And it may not be for everybody. It may not, you know, and I understand that. I mean, if you want to, like, go down to the strip mall and see everybody that's the same race as you are, that's the same color as you are, that's the same sexual orientation you are, that's the same, then go, go do that. That's fine. That's your own business. I don't want to live like that. And if you want to, like, you know, Eat whatever, you know, that, that's fine. And turkey and sprouts. You know, I'm mean, serious. Some people want to eat turkey and sprouts on wheat bread. Then that, go eat it. I don't eat that shit. <laughs> I mean, it's fine, but don't expect. The point is, is that we choose to be here because we don't care. And I think we have a superb quality of life. But it's not what motivates us. It's a way of life. And that's our sort of mission here during this time where we have this sort of attention is to explain to people why we're different, why we want to be different, and why we're going to stay different. Because it doesn't, if we, we can rebuild anything, we can do anything we want, but if we lose the essence and the character of who we are, we will have lost everything. I don't want to live in a city. There are any number of cities that I could live in if I wanted to. I chose, the reason I chose to come here is I wanted to live in a culture. I want to raise my children in a culture, in a culture that has its own food, its own music, its own funerals, its own social structure, its own body of literature, its own architecture. Everything that goes into making a successful, nuanced, deep culture exists right here. 
and I don't want to lose one part of it. And if you told me that I had to lose any of that, to trade any of that for progress, I'd say no. We can't retreat one inch. We'll take progress, but the progress has to be on our terms. Has to be on our terms. I want to live in a, in a multicultural, multiracial city. I don't. That's what I want. That's what I like. It's my choice. You don't have to. So, our task in, in, in is in, in, in the good news is we have more restaurants than we had before the engineering failure. We had two Grammys. Our, our culture is by and large remaining intact. And that's the important thing. That's more important than anything else. And to those of you who are not from here, who can't understand it, I, it doesn't make you a bad person. <laughs> I, I, I get it. Again, you know, you'd be like wheat bread and sprouts and turkey. I just, that's good. I love whatever it is. You know, but it's not here. And this is what we are. And uh, it's just, uh, uh, you, just in terms of the progress we made, uh, you know, I've always saying if, if 100 people tell you that you have something stuck between your teeth, you probably got something stuck between your teeth. It's a pretty, pretty good. To <coughs> Everybody comes up to me and says essentially the same thing, and that is James or, 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 or Mr. Carville, which is, you know, people tend to hear to and they go, whoa. You know, did you, did you ever think that we'd be where we are today, five years out? And implied in that is, is we're doing much better. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that's just what it is. We look at where we are today after that massive, colossal engineering failure that, 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 that wrecked our city. And, and that is not to say that we certainly we have problems. People come here and they, they're, they're, they're shocked to find that we have poverty in New Orleans. I, I, I don't know how to, I'll break the news gently to you, but we actually had poverty here in, in 2004. Uh, you might not have realized it, but but, but we did. No, and, and, and people have a tendency to say, well, there's been some good and some bad. And that's true. This, we still have things that we have to deal with. We get, you know, there's no doubt about that. And we have plenty, plenty of areas that still remain devastated and, and this and that. But I, I will say this, that we've had more, much more good than bad that's happened here. And the absolute best thing that's happened here is, is we're not, we haven't and we're not going to retreat one inch in preserving not our quality of life, but our way of life. Thank you all very much.